Welcome to Sports Talk. Hello everyone, welcome. I'm Nick, and that's Mike from Top Notch Sports. Welcome. We're here today to talk about the firing of Coach Anthony Lynn. Now, you guys know I had a breaking news report on this earlier today, and we really want to discuss this one. I know there's the Doug Marone one, and there's the Adam Gase one, but nothing was as shocking as this one so far. Somewhat expected, but still not, yeah. you know, not, not everybody was on board with this. Mike, go ahead. I wasn't on board with this at least, but go ahead. I'll let you talk. I mean, there have been some murmurs going on for the last couple of weeks about Anthony Lynn's time being over with the Chargers. I didn't think they would do it personally because it's not – Anthony Lynn isn't the guy out there kicking field goals and missing field goals. Anthony Lynn isn't the guy out there playing defense for his team. But let's just – Anthony Lynn's about a 500 coach with this team over the course of four seasons. I think he's 30 – he's 33 and 32. A couple years ago had a 12-win season and then fell apart since then. But they, ha- they showed improvement – from last year. So that's why I didn't expect him to necessarily get fired. They had the best rookie quarterback of all time, statistically, and just watching him play. He looked like he's been in the league. Justin Herbert looked like he's been in the league for a few years. Honestly, I thought they were moving in the right direction. A couple, a couple made kicks, a couple stops on defense. This team could be a playoff team, but now here's the thing. You fire Anthony Lynn. Like I don't think Anthony Lynn is a gr- like he's not a great coach. I don't think he's a bad coach. You got to bring in somebody that is going to work good with Justin Herbert. They need to bring in an offensive and a quarterback mastermind, I think, to develop this kid to his full potential because this guy could be a, a star. I think he's going to be a star in this league. You know, we said, me and Nick said that early. I said it very early that I loved Justin Herbert. So now you got to hire a coach. You went and fired a guy that was manageable. He's, he could win you games. He could bring you to the playoffs. But now you got to bring in someone who's going to develop this quarterback. You got to bring in a good offensive minded coach who is known for working with top quarterbacks. I think, I think that's the route, route the chargers need to go from here. I, I agree with you. And look, here, here's what I'm going to go with. All right. First things first, I'm going to start with, I, I totally disagree with this decision, especially when you draft a quarterback and they're performing well under the current system. Look, I'm not going to – the reason why he got fired, in my opinion, is because how the time management. And I told you this earlier, too, when I was talking. I was like, there were so many times where they decided – like, I remember watching the one game where there was like 20 seconds left and Herbert handed off the ball to the running back and they had no timeouts and then they were rushing. And you know how the defense like holds on to the ball and doesn't give it back to the referee to spot it. And they were trying to spike it. Well, by that time, it wasted like 14 seconds. You can't do that. You can't run the ball with no timeouts left under like with 20 something seconds left. Yeah. So, yeah so, and it wasn't Anthony, Anthony Lynn said that was not his decision. It was, it will get fixed. Anthony- Real quick, Anthony Lynn, I don't believe Anthony Lynn calls plays. No, he doesn't. No, no, he didn't. He no, he called not. plays for the offense. So that no. might not have been on Anthony Lynn. No, it wasn't. I'm sure Anthony Lynn had a long talk with the offensive coordinator after that one. He absolutely did. and that, that. But all these things led up to the firing of him. And, you know, when you're the guy in charge, when you, you're the, the official head coach, you got to make sure that all your assistants and coordinators are putting these players in the right position. Everyone's got to be on the same page. Exactly. And I don't don't necessarily know that's what was going on in L.A. this year with the Chargers. I don't think everyone was on the same page. No. I think had a defense that has players on it that didn't perform, and I think you got a great offense that did perform. I think what held them back was their defense this season. Yeah. But ultimately, when you have multiple bad seasons and the team is not really moving in a forward direction, the coach is going to get fired. We see it happen – all the time in the NFL, and I don't like I don't necess- I don't know if I 100% agree with it. But I I'm not. I don't. Lose- I'm not going to lose sleep over it either because I think there's better coaching candidates that can come in and coach this team, especially if they're good offensive-minded coaches. You're right. I- I'll get into a few of those in a second. We'll get into those in a second. But let me like just real fast finish the the, the thing here. I remember watching Hard Knocks. All the go back, rewind to like the best Hard Knocks ever, which was the Cleveland Browns. And I remember watching Hugh Jackson and all the coordinators and all the assistants were sitting there and they said they were making all these suggestions for him. I forget who was the old, who was the offensive coordinator? Do you remember his name? He was for the Pittsburgh Steelers for years. Him and Greg Williams yeah. didn't play each other. Yeah. Um, Shoot. Get his name. Anyway, if you figure it out, let me know. 
he they're all suggesting different things. All the coaches, him, Freddie Kitchens, all of them were talking to him, suggesting different things. And Hugh Jackson sat there and said, Listen, I've been in your position and I, I respect all of you giving me options or, or, Todd, or Todd Haley. Todd Haley, yep. He's like, I respect you guys all giving me different suggestions. But he's like, I've sat in your seat before and I'm sitting here now. So he's like, I will listen to your suggestions, but I'm in this position, and if I'm going to get fired, I want to be the guy that's getting fired. Basically saying, when this is my job now. It's my job to make sure this team performs, and if we don't perform correctly, it's on me. It's going to be my fault at the end of the day. So I got to make sure that we have success. Yeah. Say it again. You, you break up whenever I talk. I say it again. His, it's, it's his ass if they don't perform, and that's exactly. the same thing. That's the situation the right here. Situation. So the thing is, when all these things start not to work, then they're going to look back at the head coach at the end of the day. Real fast now, let's fast forward. So that's that. Look, I, I again, I think Anthony Lynn was doing good things. They won the last four, the last quarter of the season. All four, they went four and on the final four games. You can't get much better than that. I feel like things were trending upward. I feel like this was a premature fire, as so I did all the other fires so far. Look, here's this. Here are the potential options. Eric Bianami, right? The guy for the yeah, Kansas City I'll Chiefs. I don't like Eric B like, I mean, I don't necessarily, I don't know if I don't like him, but I don't think he does much over there in Kansas city. Now Chiefs fans, you can disagree with me, but that's Andy Reid's show. No, if, it I, is. I I would, see, if you're the chargers, whether you want to go with a guy that's seasoned and has been with good quarterbacks, you want to go with a guy that's young, like, uh, like a Joe Brady and pair him with Justin Herbert. I wouldn't be completely. Uh, that is, I love that fit. But see, I don't know where they want to go. I don't know if they want to go with a guy who has worked with a lot of a lot of great quarterbacks over the years, or go with a young guy who's going to bond with Justin Herbert and, and Joe Brady. I like I like the Joe Brady. I would like that higher, to be honest with you. Yeah, it'd be interesting. Another few names that we're going to throw around: Brian Dable for the uh, right now he's for the Buffalo Bills, if I'm not mistaken. He right now he's been doing phenomenal things with Josh Allen. You got to really give him credit. Look at that offense. Stephon Diggs is playing very good. Um, Josh Allen's doing great. Cole Beasley, uh, everybody, John Brown, they're all playing good. That's another really good option. And another one that we we're kind of sleeping on again, but maybe it's the year you're looking for offensive guys. We got to remember, um, maybe by the name of Josh McDaniels, who has been a name that's been getting thrown around for years. Yeah. I don't, I don't think Josh McDaniels is going to go anywhere, but you never know. Like, you uh, I don't, I don't see it. I mean, these last couple of years, he's been, he's been at the top of the coach candidates list. He's basically, he could have coached anywhere he really wanted to. Absolutely. I don't, I don't see him leaving New England. To be no. honest. Who knows? I mean, this Justin Herbert kid is the next best but quarterback in the league. Potentially a guy like Byron Leftwich from uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Their offense has been sparking lately. They're all, they're in the up and up. Maybe he gets a job. It, it depends where the Chargers want to go. If they want to go established, or they want to go like the Panthers did go young, go Matt, like like Panthers went Matt rule. So why not you go Joe Brady and see how that works out. I, I don't know what, I don't know where the chargers are going to go. What direction we have no ties, no leads. We have no idea what's going on in LA. Not right now. A few other names. Real, I'm just going to throw these out real fast. There's Jim and Jim Harbaugh, right from Michigan. We, we know Dan who Jim Harbaugh is. Uh, Dan Mullen from Florida, right? We always, we hear Matt Campbell. And one other guy I want to throw out there, too, uh, they've been saying Arthur Smith is from Titans. He's Tennessee. But another name that you're not going to really like, Bill O'Brien. O'Brien, that idiot. That, no, he that is idiot. on the list. Of, but I, I, I don't think he should after what happened in that situation. I think you're better off going out. Like, uh, for some reason, Lincoln, Lincoln Riley is never brought up in coach candidates list, and I have no idea why. If you look at the quarterbacks he's coached in Oklahoma, the list just goes on. Baker Mayfield, um, Kyler Murray. He, he's coached Heisman's. Jalen Hurts is was great for Lincoln Riley. I, it just shocks me that no team ever reaches out. Maybe they do. Maybe he doesn't want to leave Oklahoma. Uh, yeah. And, that I is a know. guy right there that has had success with quarterbacks. So maybe that's a guy you want to pick up the phone and give him a call. And Absolutely. Urban Meyer, but I think Urban Meyer's going, going yeah. Jacksonville. All signs are pointing that way, you know, and, and he wants so much money. It's just crazy. It's crazy. These people that want insane amount of money to do this job, it, it is actually insane. And to me, it's going to be an interesting decision to see what happens 
to the Chargers. I mean, again, this is a nice landing spot. I'm not going to lie. The the fan base, everyone craps all over it. They're not – they got something to be excited about now with Justin Herbert. And you got to remember this, too, going back to Anthony Lynn. This poor guy was coaching with a lot of injuries. Austin Eckler, Mike e- – and Mike, Mike Williams was in and out. You had uh, Keenan Allen, who was a little bit in and out. Mike Their Williams. defense, Joey Bosa in and out. And you got the cornerback room in and out. Derwin James hasn't played at all. I mean, it just sucks. That that's, the that's another thing, in. Nick. Maybe they want to go – they say – I like what the offense did this year. We're going to stick with our offensive guys, and we're going to go hire a coach to make this defense tough. Robert Sala from San Francisco. He, he should have gotten a job last year, he said. in my opinion. Maybe that's, they go there, and that just changes culture. That's That changes that team to just tough culture. Yeah, then that's exactly what – in my that's what I'm looking at this list that they have that, that the people want us to thank. And I'm seeing offensive coordinator, offensive coordinator, offensive I'm like, where's the deep? Wait, the, this is an awesome defense that coach too. You're coaching Joey Bosa, Melvin Ingram. If he, if he still stays there, a bunch of pieces. Uh, yeah, and, and Kenneth Murray, the rookie linebacker from a season ago. And not only that, like you look at the, it's just Robert Sala is fire. He loves that. He loves football. You get yeah. him, and he brings in like a quarterback coach or a really good offensive coordinator. They can be just as good. It doesn't necessarily – I know the NFL nowadays, all coaches are like offensive-minded, and now they've been calling their own plays. Sometimes you got to get a defensive-minded guy there that has an offensive coach in his staff. Yep. It's been getting overlooked anymore. Every head coach – for example, your Philadelphia Eagles, Doug, Doug Peterson, you kind of wish you would hand over the play calling. But sometimes these new guys – they, they, they want full control of the play calling. They want this, that. Sometimes the best thing a coach can do is take care of their job, being the head coach, being the leader of the locker room, and having an offensive and defensive coordinator run their offenses and defensive. Yeah. And, and if they see anything they want to kind of, you know, add Make in it, or pitch in, go ahead. Each week, what's going in? What's going in? What's going to be either your play selections? They're going to get final say at the end of the week anyway before the game. Right. So. So you think that that, in my opinion, has always worked best? I know nowadays we see a lot of offense coordinators taking over, but it just sucks to see it. And maybe Robert Sala, somebody that nobody's mentioning, might be the guy. I mean, it yeah, probably I, actually I think Detroit's pretty high on him right now. They are. They are. They've always liked their defensive court, like defensive yeah, minded. That guy. makes you wonder: Are they going to do it again though? Because they failed with Matt Patricia. See, that's just the thing though. New England Patriots coaches, except for Brian Flores, ten. To not do good when they leave Bill Belichick. Yeah, really. I mean, I, that's literally has been Maybe the the fact. Doesn't want to leave. Yeah, I. Uh, he might not feel ready. He really might not feel ready. And you look at the only other guy that really, that in my opinion, I've always liked was Joe Judge. That left his tree. That actually is. Yeah, my yeah, yeah. Joe Judge is too soon to tell yet, but I, from the looks of things, it looks like he's going to do a good job. Yeah, no, I absolutely like Joe Judge. I like your personality. I like the way he coaches. But look, Chargers, man. Let me know who you think are going to be your Nets uh, head coach. Um, let me know maybe offensive coordinator, defensive coordinator, who you think you guys are going to get. It just stinks because we saw Herbert starting to really shine and do really good things. And now to have this head coaching change, Mike, you know, I always say, me being a Raiders fan, especially, I, I'm not going to, this is tough on a quarterback. You need continuity. This year, in particular, the year, the, co- the COVID year. He didn't have enough, that much time to spend time with his coach anyway. I don't think it will affect Justin Herbert that much. It this is not. probably the least a year of communication that the NFL has ever had. And he's performed very well. Yeah, and he's performed extremely well. I think if they get a good coach in there and they bring in a good system, I think it's going to do nothing but benefit Justin But Herbert. don't you think, like, maybe – and I'm just saying this now playing devil's advocate here, not saying that you're not 100% right – wouldn't it have been smart, since considering it was like the least year of communication, all this stuff? Yeah, wouldn't it, it would be smart him. to stick with Anthony Lynn and let him have another season? Yeah, I mean, again, uh, like you like you said earlier, he had one year left on his coaching contract. Why not let him go through that last year? This was just a premature fire. But uh, again, like I said before, I'm not I'm not going to lose sleep over it because I don't necessarily think Anthony Lynn was a great coach anyway. I think he's about an average coach. I don't think he's a terrible coach, but I don't think he's a great coach. So why not bring someone else in and give them a chance to try to bring this team to the next level? Yeah, no, we'll have – we have a video of us discussing Anthony Lynn in an older video. I'll play that at the end of the video, see what the hell we say. I really don't remember. 
Um, I just feel like the last three fires, really, today's the day of, of the, the head coaching, I mean, chopping off their damn heads is it, terrible. Like today was like, the, we're going to get rid of all of them. And I mean, to me, the least, well, again, it depends. You look at Adam Gates, everyone wanted him gone, didn't really have a roster. So it was like, yeah. Then you got Doug Marone. Nobody really wanted him gone, but they fire him. And again, the roster. The Chargers, they have a roster. Anthony Lynn kind of struggled in all honesty. But again, I just feel like with one more year, with the year of COVID, he should have had another season. But, But if this was a normal year and he just struggled, I feel like maybe, and he didn't have a rookie quarterback, maybe you cut him. But all that factoring into it, it just kind of sucks to see this be the case. Yeah. But uh, it's the way it is. We gotta see. We gotta see who they bring in. They might. They might bring in a great. A great prospect. They might bring yeah. in a great candidate. I'm sorry. We'll see. I have to wait and say. And again, what well, one final thing? A lot of people are gonna want that job. The, the Chargers. Yeah. That is, it's in L.A. You got. You're working with a great quarterback, the best rookie quarterback of all time. So I mean, it's a bright future. Nice there. weather. I mean, you really top of the art facility, most expensive one in the. I mean, that is is a really nice place to go. And Chargers fans, I hope you guys are going to be excited. This should be something to look into for the future. I'm excited to see what happens. But we'll have to all just sit back, wait and see, and uh, see what they do. Because this decision could very well really continue the trajectory of Herbert, or this could really affect his young career. And I I don't want to see that happen. I don't think they'll do it. I don't think the Chargers will do it. But if I'm ownership, I'm talking to Justin Herbert through this process. I want my my quarterback to agree with the coach that's hired because at the end of the day, that is what's going to lead your franchise to the next level, elite le- elite play from Justin Herbert. Yeah. I don't know if Herbert – I wish he knew more of the coaches. and He's a very – he's a shy guy. He really is. But he – I wish he would it's, talk to him more. Love him. I mean, on the field, on the field, I see him scream – I see him yelling stuff out. No, he does. No, he's oh. he stepped up. The leader stuff, I throw that right out the dance. Remember that? Oh, he's not a good leader. That, no. But he's still shy, I feel like, in a sense of not really. I, I The other day I'm watching. So just last week, let me just one more rant here. I'm watching the post-conference of Herbert. And there's this ESPN announcer, like like presser, like she's the media person. And she asked him, asked him how long are you going to keep that beard? What? He has like a little mustache, like a little bit, like a little bit of like stuff, like a goatee here. She like that's the most stupid, ridiculous. And he was like, I've just been kind of focusing on football. She's like, well, well, you won't think that very long or so. Like, just something so ridiculous. Watch the Justin Herbert, Mike. That's what I want you guys to do. Everybody got to watch it. They what say, is that? People say there's no such thing as a stupid question. That was that's a dumb question. I think your name was Shelly or so, something. You got to look at it. It's something from ESPN. It might look is it around. Yep. Her, like, Who, how long are you going to leave that? Football? Terrible. Terrible. That's what he said. He's like, I've been focusing on football. Like, are you serious? Are you serious? That's what, that's the question he had for the guy. So I, and he was so humble, so shy about it, but he stated his point. He handled it the best way he could. I, I'm a big fan of him. I know you've always been a fan of him. Can't wait to see what this kid can do. We both said that we think that this guy is the best quarterback in at least NFL recent history. Some would even stretch and say in NFL history all time. He, he's been phenomenal. There's never been a rookie quarterback to my knowledge that has ever played the way he's played this year. He makes throws that veterans can't even make. Yep. And that's the truth. All right, guys, we'll leave it, let you guys go there. Hopefully you guys enjoy this episode of Sports Talk on Top Notch Sports. And I think that's all from Nick and Mike. See you guys soon. We are all better. See you guys soon. Peace. Anthony Lynn, I think Anthony Lynn's overrated. Anthony, they have high hopes for Anthony Lynn after he had that winning season over there. Yeah, no I one. Think, I think the Chargers. I'm gonna go neutral. Ohio. Yeah, no, I'm gonna go neutral. A lot of people don't think highly of him anymore, but I don't think he's a bad coach. This next, he's not year. a bad coach.